who are these people that they think they can push this on us? Who are these people that think that they can control us? Truth is truly what sets us free. I mean, it's disturbing often, but without it, we have no idea of knowing where we're going. Most humans will override their intuition to be polite or to fit in. Once people open their eyes to this stuff, their lives are never the same. Their priorities are never the same. I mean, everyone's saying this is the most traumatic time in history. You know, at least we've got so many tools in our toolkit now and so many resources, but equally it's so confusing for people. Like, there's so many distractions. If you can get something of value that inspires you, great. See how you can apply it in your life and see how you can improve uh, your situation. And those who are aware of it and who work on that and with that uh, have very, very balanced and beautiful lives, even through this madness. Come on, give yourself at least a chance. So I am absolutely delighted to introduce a new guest onto the channel, but I think many of you are going to recognize him. Gene Nolan, um, songwriter, artist, inspirer. And let me tell you a little bit for those of you that don't know Gene. So Gene and his wife, uh, Christine started the Inspire channel back in 2019. That seems like a different world now, doesn't it, June? <laughs> um, and it does. It does. Oh, you've already reached over 100 million people, which is absolutely incredible. And your mission is really to bring back truthful information, spiritual wisdom into the centre of human conversation. And my goodness, we need that. Um, so you're also a father of three many, many talented. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, Jean, for those people that don't know you and what was your inspiration behind the Inspire channel? Well, first off, Catherine, thank you so much for having me. Uh, just a small correction. It's John, not Jean, but that's a common thing. No worries oh, at all. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I'm not good at pronouncing. <laughs> don't worry about it. It happens a lot. Um, yeah. It's an honor to be on your channel and I really appreciate your work. Uh, but it, you know, and I think for, for a lot of us, uh, things kind of started uh, similarly. Inspired was really, well, let me let me rewind a little bit. We've been, my wife and I have been in the field of um, education, if you will, truth, freedom, and helping people for a very long time. And, and uh, you know, on the other side of things, I've always been an artist and a songwriter. So, you know, being in Nashville, doing this on the daily um, one morning in 2019, actually pretty much almost five years to the day ago, I came out of a meditation at about 4 a.m. in the morning, and I had this very, very clear voice that said, you start a YouTube channel, call it Inspired. I had really no idea where it was all going. I was just following that. Um, and you know, when some things like that come so clearly, there's no negotiation there. You just got to go for it. And, and so I did, and I started just intuitively working on it, you know, creating a little logo and, and setting it all up. And after a few days, I told my wife about it and uh, she was all in and said, let's do this. Uh, kind of, we trust each other's intuition on things. And it, it started, you know, snowballing from there and growing, and, you know, nothing happened overnight, but just things started growing beautifully. And then a year later, so that was April of 2020 when all the madness really started and people, or it was maybe May, and people were very uh, frightened. You yeah. know, nobody knew what was going to happen, what was going on. It was a completely unprecedented situation. And then Christine came out of a meditation one morning and said, let's do daily live streams. I said, wow, okay, okay, let's do daily live streams. And we sort of created a space for people to come to something that was consistent, something that was comforting. And, and, you know, we did all kinds of things. We did little meditations together. We did a little exercises together, just something that grounded and balanced people. And, um, and then it's literally what the creator puts in front of us every day. That's sort of where the journey goes. And we're incorporating all, you know, that there's really no, there's no, line in the sand and we're not going to cross it because this subject might be uncomfortable it's really driven by the exploration of truth and and you know what are the right ways to live i think you know and, and that, i think we got to ask those big questions and that's what we do on inspired every day and we're surprised sometimes ourselves where the journey takes us
it's such a beautiful journey and um there's so many areas i want to discuss with you today because what i love so much about your work is that you really do understand the interconnectedness between everything and you really demonstrate that in the range of subjects that you cover but Capping on the inspiration, it's really interesting. I watched, my son was back for the weekend, and we watched a film, which we don't normally do, and it was The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Have you seen it? No, no, I haven't. There's a scene in that film, and it made me literally, the hairs on the back of my neck stand up, because it's so true to what's happening now. And, and I won't give too much away if you haven't seen it, but right at the end, there's a really creepy scene where... Um, the baddie has got someone in captivity and they've lured them in. But he sits there, cool as a cucumber, and said it's absolutely incredible how most humans will override their intuition to be polite or to fit in. <laughs> and the scene where it said it, I, I would really encourage everyone if you haven't seen it. I mean, it's a bit of a creepy film. But it, it was so perfect for me about where we are now and in terms of how often so many people override that intuition, um, why do you think that is? How do you think we've got to that state? You know, it's funny when you said that, I was always wondering, you hear of these war stories and you hear of all, you know, and, and of atrocities and uh, you often hear of people that dig their own graves, literally. Literally. Yeah. And I wonder, what made you do that? You know where this was leading. Why would you dig your own grave? Like what What exactly? It's kind of overriding. Like you say, I think fear overrides a lot. Like fear is the thing that, you know, lets people override uh, creativity, logic, um, um, uh, like you said, intuition, spirit, all of those things. And and that's, I think, the, the driver in in mainstream society is how can we evoke that from speaking from mainstream society or controlling them? How can we evoke fear in people, right? How can we bring yeah. that emotion out? And I, I think the reason why it's so dominant in people, because we're a traumatized society, right? We are multi-generational now. And, and I, you know, people have very different associations with what the word trauma means. And it isn't just the worst of abuses, but just, it's an abusive society. It's an abusive way of life. We have, this uh, fierce competitiveness that drives our societies has has made has brought the worst out in people uh, a lot of times, and I think that's what creates a cycle of abuse, a cycle of trauma. And so, when you have that in people instilled at a very young age, right? So they're brought up as they're brought up with some some sort of trauma that they never heal. Then, in those moments, when uh, a situation arises that is very unusual or something that you didn't expect that uh, uh, that old emotion is triggered and so you're you're that's why you're fight or flight why that's why you lose all creativity and the only way really to regain creativity to regain um intuition in those kinds of situations is to start healing right and so healing has become such an important subject real healing i'm not talking about surface level going down uh in the deep layers of your subconsciousness of your psyche and of your spirit and seeking uh, wholeness again. And there are beautiful practices, techniques that are resurfacing that I think indigenous people in ceremony knew about and have practiced and never let it get this far, right? I mean, you had, you look at many indigenous cultures, whenever an, an accident happened or something happened that was tra traumatizing, they had ceremony to deal with it after, right after it happened, yeah. not 15 years later. And so we're starting to... Um, regain that knowledge. It's starting to come back and many people feel drawn to that kind of work, which I think is highly important. And I, I, I've been predicting that I think in the next 10 to 15 years, we're going to see trauma healing being the dominant uh, field of healing. And that's going to be the most important uh, modality of healing, I believe, which automatically removes the barrier between you and your intuition. It's the hurt, it's the pain, it's the fear that creates a barrier between you and your intuition. So when that is gone and when, you know, healing has happened, then intuition will just be a very, very normal thing again for people, I believe. That's so important. Uh, and then there's so much to unpick from that, but I think it's so true. I'm constantly shocked, you know, when we're all looking at different ways to try and 
ask different questions and get different awareness, which I want to come on to how you managed to do this. I'm so shocked at the moment by um, the aggressiveness uh, in the communication, particularly online and in social media. And, you know, I'm old enough to have grown up where we used to be taught to have good old fashioned debates and you listen to other people's opinions and you didn't have to agree with them and you could still be friends afterwards. Um, and now this the level of trauma is so high in society at large for so many different reasons, which we're going to be talking about, that people just don't seem to have those communication skills. And when they don't have that ability to open their minds to do this work, where do you go from that? How do we start really healing society at a deep level? One person at a time? Yep. There's I don't I don't think there is a a collective modality that does that because it's individual. The, the, yeah. the hurt is individual, the, the pain was individual. So I just think we have to destigmatize it and, you know, sort of make differentiate between what is coaching, what is therapy and what is deep trauma healing. And those are different things. Right. And, and the, the sort of the mainstream psychology and mainstream psychiatry are fields that, I mean, looking at how long they've been around and how, you know how widespread they are they haven't really yielded great results so i don't i don't i don't put a lot of trust in those modalities because they usually don't go deep enough and they don't give people tools um but it, it is really up to the individual we we frequently our our middle daughter is very drawn kiara is very drawn to deep trauma work and so she's in the final stages of her foundational education in deep trauma healing based on the journey work by Brandon Bass, which is one of those uh, yeah. very, very effective methods that we love, we've used for many, many years. Um, and it's making it, as I said, accessible for people. Now the our I think what we need to do is talk about it and make sure that people know it's okay, right? And and that the time span that you, or, or the distance that you travel between your initial trauma, your pain, and until you get to that point where you finally make the decision that you're going to go and tackle that, that you're going to go and start the healing journey, that's the pain distance. But once you make a decision, it starts getting better and better from there on out. And once you go through that, and the beautiful thing is these processes are not as complicated and don't last as long as people think. Yeah. Uh, you know, so so that that's one thing. And to, to the comment that you made, I think it's so, uh, you put it so beautifully, the aggressiveness and the violence in communication. The reason why maybe you and I don't communicate like that is because we still experienced, uh, you know, we had to suffer the consequences of our aggression. Yes, we, said, we had someone, we had the, yeah. the experience of someone going, what the hell, why, why are you talking to me like that? So you learn from that and you go, oh, you know, I can say things, but I can choose a certain tone. I can respect that someone has a different uh, view but what I what I am noticing is what is becoming clear is that um, there's a huge distinction. People that operate from that pain, unhealed pain, they're reactionary, right? And they're they're not in. They can never really be fully creative. The people that go and do the healing, do the inner work, it's amazing what's possible. And they become inspiration for all the others, right? And they give others permission to go there. When you see, when you Let's say you you know you've known a person for 10 years, 15 years, and then you kind of lose touch and and they were always troubled and dark or whatever. You meet them a couple of years later and you go, What what happened? Mm -hmm. Full of life, full of joy, full of inspiration. And those kind of experiences, people are having more and more and more. And and so it's beginning to sink in that the inner work is really the key to the transformation on the outside. I couldn't agree more. And we see this so beautifully demonstrated with animals when they're allowed to go through their healing cycle. And I'm lucky enough to work predominantly with animals, which I think quite honestly is at times the only thing that keeps me sane. Um, but there's some really big issues going on at the moment on a society level. And I think so many people find it so overwhelming that they can get sort of um, paralysis by analysis it sort of seems well you know I really can't make a difference on an individual level and you on your channel you talk about all these issues so let's let's go in for one of the biggies um, it's amazing how they 
they normalize these ideas, not not with a lot of us. So I'm going to start with the GMO humans and the GMO seeds. You know, GMO seeds, so many people still don't really understand the implications of GMO seeds because it's just been sold to the general public as a benefit um, to the world's food problems. And now we're really seeing the genetically modified humans. And that's a nervous laughter, everyone, not not a happy laughter. Um, It's such an important issue. You did a beautiful video about this. How can we help to get this message out and make people to understand the implications of the decisions they're making now? I think we have, you know, speaking from a kind of mainstream public standpoint, we have this hyper micro view on things in the moment right here under the microscope and if you're under the microscope things look very different than when you take the forty thousand foot view right you have a very different perspective under the microscope things might look really good and and beneficial and you know but then you take the forty thousand foot view and you ask well who came up with these ideas and why right why would people think about genetically altering humans changing their dna uh, introducing artificial technologies into the body, nanotechnologies, and, and to the point where you alter, uh, you know, the alter the neurons, where you alter the the uh, connections in your brain, to the point where you hook up to AI. And um, if we look at the cultural sort of changes currently, then uh, we shouldn't make the mistake of thinking that they are natural or just a natural evolution. They're very yeah. much implanted into society. Like this transgender thing is really not what it looks like. It is just a stepping stone to an acceptance of transhumanism, which is the merger of biology and technology, where this is li- really leading. Mm. The, the, the goal is to create a completely technocratic and technology-centered society where technology is at the center, not just serving everything but ruling over everything and for that you you need to create sort of sort of the the homo roboticus if you will or there are various expressions and this is you know this has been in science fiction and movies for a very long time and people just never could wrap their mind around whether that was real uh but you know all the terminator movies all of that was really just a projection into their desired future yeah and and we if you don't take that forty thousand foot view and try to look at the, the whole picture. And then you notice that the same groups, the same entities, the same people that are financing and pushing the transgender and gender fluidity and 72 gender discussion are the same people who are heavily invested in these new technologies who are wanting to push humanity there. They couldn't care less about gender expression of someone. You know, that's that's just a- Of course not, yeah. The, and to go back to the root, they're exploiting people's traumas, right? I mean. You know, we, we used to think, well, someone has, you know, a problem discovering who they really are. Well, let's help them. You know, mm-hmm. let's find someone who's really good at this, who studied this, maybe who learned how to do it. And let's help them so they can become healthy, whole and live a good life. Today, the, the response is no matter how insane, how far away you are from sanity, it's OK here. You know, here, here's your confirmation that everything is OK. Um, every expression is OK. And it's not. Uh, you know, a lot of these expressions are violent toward others. A lot of these expre- expressions are self-harming. And so um, that is being normalized, but it is all simply leading to this, uh, you know, merger between biology and technology. And um, I would encourage everybody, if you don't want to take my word for it, go and look what Google really does. Go with their and look with where their money goes to. Go and look who's on the board And what they're saying, go and look at what Mark Zuckerberg has been saying where the future is, where all these companies go to and what they want to achieve. And then ask yourself, how would you get the people to get along with that? You know, how do you get someone who grew up in the 20th century, sort of instilled the, uh, you know, old school industrialized world to go into this madness, right? So you have to create this crazy uh, cultural shift that we're in right now to get there. And more and more people are are realizing this and are understanding that it's a very small minority pushing this and they actually don't want it. They just don't understand what they're a part of. And when they do, they start withdrawing their energy and saying, no, we, I don't want to, I don't want to contribute to that. 
And, and we just have to repeat and repeat and try to find different angles until we reach a critical mass that says, maybe, just maybe, this technocratic path has led us to the point where we're at right now. Uh, the most depressed, the most obese, the sickest, and, and uh, you know, most suicidal prone society in history. Now, there's many good things in people today, don't get me wrong, but but that's the truth. So if the technocratic path has led us to here, then is more technology going to get us to a better outcome? And, you know, you know, more of the same never changed anything. And I think those are the kinds of thoughts that we or questions we at least need to ask and have discussions about so people know what they're in for. Most people don't. Most people didn't know what this was and what it did in the body. And now that they have it, they are afraid to discover what it could be. Uh, and so th that's just a cycle we need to break. Yeah, you mentioned a really important point there about asking good questions. And I think that's a skill. You know, we all know little children, it's the constant why, 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 why. And there's a reason for that because they're keeping an open mind and they're exploring. But it's really quite shocking to see that questioning is not allowed. I mean, you have to really call it evil genius in some respects because now in hindsight is so wonderful. I can look back and I can see so many agendas that I didn't realize at the time, you know, being a working mother and things like that. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. But the whole point is that when you learn different things, that's the point of society. And in, in traditional society, that's why the elders were so esteemed, because they had gone through life and they had got wisdom that they could pass on. Um, questioning. How can we encourage more questioning and um not shutting down conversations because I've seen you talk about it so much already about you know the labeling of conspiracy theorists um you know fear mongering you're going to kill your granny if you don't do the responsible thing these are all ways of shutting it down and we never see people in public positions actually asking open questions and being able to listen well I I always say start with your with your own life with you know, just look at any given day in your life from the moment from the moment that you get up to the moment that you go to sleep and just examine every little action and ask yourself, where did this come from? Why am I doing this? Right. Why am I putting toothpaste on my toothbrush? Like what what who invented toothpaste? What's in those what's in the toothpaste? What's the real purpose of it? Um, what, what was before that? I know these sound like silly questions, but that's the only way how you start to find your own blind spots and your own biases. We are, because we do a million things in any given day, we have to automate so many things, right? So yeah. the things that we automate, we don't question. Those are the things that need to be questioned the most. Why do we do them? Who taught us to do them? Do they benefit us? Do they harm us? So when we go through that on an individual level, right? And we start kind of that journey, uh, sooner rather than later, you'll start asking bigger questions you know, why do we do this collectively? Does this make any sense? Why, how do we end up in the position that we're in? And and I think if it doesn't have a personal connection to your life, it's very hard to ask those questions. Now, the, the 2020 era onward, the the beauty in it, um, and, you know, I don't, I don't mean to say that lightly, but the beauty in it was that everybody was affected. Mm -hmm. So it connected, right? Everybody was affected. Everybody felt either limited in certain ways or suppressed or scared or whatever. So um, while that in and of itself wasn't a good thing, but what it triggered in a lot of people was, hold on, why? Mm. Why are we doing this? Does this make sense, right? And so people went, the simplest thing was people went and got and, 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 and said, hold on. So you're telling me that if I walk around with my plain face, that I'm, I'm the huge, biggest danger to society. But if I put on my bandana, mm. then, you know, I'm, I'm totally good and I'm protecting others. And then you go and look at just the basic scientific explanation, the basic science of bandanas and droplets and particles. And you go, you know, so those kinds of things have helped people. And then they went, OK, if they're lying about this, because you can't tell me that a doctor or a scientist doesn't know this. Of course they know this. I mean, this is Absolutely. basic 
Yeah. So when so when they're willing to lie for months and years on end about these things, well, what else could they possibly be lying about and why, right? Mm -hmm. And it has to have a personal connection to your life. Things that happen on the other side of the world that have no consequence for you are very hard for you to really go to the bottom of. But those things that are important in your life and that matter to you, uh, that's the best way to start. Couldn't agree more. So where we're at at the moment, where there's so many big issues for people to be concerned about or or to educate themselves on, what would be some of your top ones um, that where really people could concentrate their attention, their research, their questioning? I just wanted to say that today's episode is sponsored by ASEA redox signaling molecules. Now, it comes in two forms, the liquid and the gel, plus there's a huge other product range for us. Um, but why did I start taking ASEA and why is it now an integral part of something that my whole family, both four-legged and two-legged, take every single day? Plus also something that all the clients I work with, again, four-legged and two-legged, it's number one on my priority list. Well, part of what I do, what I'm passionate about, is understanding the challenges that are affecting each and every one of us in today's modern living. Um, the more you know, the more sometimes you wish you didn't know, but the pollution in the air, in the water, in the food, um, the control of our minds, the propaganda. But one of the things that we can do is take back responsibility for our own health. Now, every single cell of our body, whether we're an animal, whether we're one of the dogs in the backgrounds or one of my plants, contain these redox signaling molecules. And cellular health and cellular communication is absolutely key, whether you want to get your body back in balance, whether you want to reverse the aging process, whether you want to address any particular challenges that you've got physically, emotionally, it all starts with healthy cells. If your liver cells are healthy, your liver's healthy. If your brain cells are healthy, your brain's healthy. But just like a mobile phone, most of us have got mobile phones that we, we use on a routine basis now. But that mobile phone, regardless of whether you've got the latest model, is completely useless without a signal. So what does this technology do? Um, the the gel is something that you can apply topically over particular areas of concern, whether you want your skin to look better, whether you've got a cellulite, whether you've got an area that's causing you a challenge. The liquid is something you drink each and every day to top up what should be in your cells anyway. But when our bodies are stressed, diseased, challenged, or as we age, we make less of them. So personally, I wouldn't be without a tip. My sleep's better. My energy levels are better. My mood's better. My mobility's better. If you want to find out more, the details are below. But I'm so grateful that this came into my life. And I'm so grateful I can share it with others. I hope you love it as much as I do. Let me know. Um, I would, I'm almost go, I'm going to jump a step ahead. I think the biggest the biggest issue that we have that is not really talked about openly is the issue of transhumanism. Yeah. And we, because as, as dramatic as it sounds, we are mere years away, if that really, and I know it sounds strange from sort of the, uh, the drop-off point for, for mass extinction of the current version of humanity. Uh, and, and this is true, right? So if a significant portion of the population, whether to their knowledge or not, has been altered significantly, then we cease to exist in, in a foreseeable future in the way that we are now. And that is a very, very, very scary thought, especially uh, since it's all based on the false premise that this is an evolutionary process and we've got we've 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 reached the end of the rope and now this is the next step. And not that we have been artificially suppressed our abilities, our beautiful natural capabilities. Uh, so the most important arena for me from a collective standpoint is that, and the, you know, maybe hopefully for society to reach a point where we can push the stop button and just say, okay, we, we're putting a stop to all of this for the moment. Let's talk about it. Let's Let's make this the focal point of our conversations everywhere in the world, because this changes everything. And then we can, we, you know, we can discuss all the other sub issues. But if this fundamental thing goes forward without being questioned, discussed, and potentially stopped, 
you know, then then all the rest will fade in comparison. So that is for me the most important issue. And with that connected, of course, you know, the loss of privacy that's connected yeah. to that. There's, you know, there's a few arenas that lead us there. It's uh, digital currencies, central bank digital currencies. Um, it is digital health passports, no movement without them, and a social credit score. So those are that's the trifecta that is required to get to that trans, you know, that that AI driven world um, where where you can't escape it. If if we allow for if we allow for these things to happen, then we have paved the path. So um, those are the last stands sort of for some sort of sovereignty and freedom. And the beautiful thing is that when people research these subjects and go into the depths of the who, the why, the when, the where, they discover their true inner desire for freedom and sovereignty and, and self-determination. It's like, who are these people that they think they can push this on us? Who are these people that think that they can control us? It's sort of, there's a fire that starts burning when you go into these subjects. And the truth is truly what sets us free. I mean, it's disturbing often, but without it, we have no idea of knowing where we're going. Yeah, it's it's such a huge issue. And you can, again, you can see how cleverly planned the transition to that has been. Um, you know, youngster today about how much time they spend on their technology, the violence of the games that they play. I was so lucky because when my children were growing up, we had such bad internet, they couldn't play anything like that. So it was such a blessing. Um, but also just the 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 whole men and women issue and men being allowed to compete in women's sports now. It's all leading in that one direction of um of getting us away from our humanism. And I think the trouble is, is so many people are caught in the rat race of life that they have this sort of collective consciousness where they will reach out aggressively because once they start thinking about that area, or, you know, once once people open their eyes to this stuff, their lives are never the same. Their priorities are never the same. I sort of liken it to someone that's diagnosed with a, uh, you know, so-called terminal disease, and that's a whole different discussion. Um, but, you know, when something really dramatic like this happens in your life, you're never the same person again. Every decision from that point onwards is different. Do you, how confident are you given the sort of human psyche that often doesn't make changes until something catastrophic happens. How confident are you that we can turn this around? Actually, I'm I'm surprisingly confident and optimistic. So, uh, and it's, it's probably because I've sort of, sort of been in this all my life for the most part. Um, I never, I, I never felt like I was fully programmed. I started asking some, pretty significant questions, at least in my perception at the age of 14. Mm. And so, you know, the, um, there were certain things that I never bought into. So, but I could, you know, if I compare that to that time, I was, there were a few people here and there and, and there were, there, there were pockets, but it was, it was fringe and you were definitely crazy. I mean, just the, the amount of subjects that have moved into at least the awareness on the edges of mainstream is actually quite positive. But there's another thing that uh, gives me even more hope and that is, you know, that we're all connected in in through a field if you will, mm. and that species go through evolutionary or uh, you know, learning leaps by something that has been popularized uh, as the 100th monkey effect. Yeah. Which is when a certain uh and and frankly quite small number of a species internalize this new knowledge or learn something new after a certain amount of, pe of people or, 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 or um, specimens of that species have learned it, it through a field of information um, sort of transitions to the rest of the species. And so that's why I think we were able, if you look at it, um, we were able to adapt to such huge changes in our own lifetime Mm -hmm. from where we started and, and how we can learn things so quickly, like new technologies, for example. So it's the same with knowledge. It's it's quite interesting that the awakening process, when I compare it to the early 2000s, it took very, it took years for people to grasp certain concepts. Yeah. And, and 
a long time to get there and difficult. And now I'm amazed at how fast uh, th this knowledge and knowing, a true inner knowing emerges in people. And I'm confident that we're already experiencing this field. Um, I call it the manifestation of truth period that we intended collectively for so long. And now it's here and it's emerging in people. And it's it's oftentimes not even inspired by consuming information. It's almost like it comes from within. And that's why I think this hundredth monkey effect is taking place. Uh, the the noise of the opposition, if you will, is very loud. They They own most of the megaphones. And so it looks like they're very powerful. But behind closed doors, a lot of people will tell you that they feel something is fundamentally off that they've been questioning things, that they've been changing things in their life. You can see it with uh, significant diet changes, lifestyle changes, you know, interest changes. Uh, I'm I'm very positive, but I think turning it around, um, you know, it will it will happen on a significant level. But we have to go through some, uh, I think, more a few more years of revelation, if you will. And and there will there will be some things we have to get to the bottom of the pit, so to speak. Unless we do, we can't really change. And so there's there's things for society to see and learn and know that will be very disturbing, but we'll get through it. And and there's a much brighter light at the end of that tunnel. There certainly is. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, all species are pretty resilient. And um yeah, I feel really, really optimistic. I think sometimes it can be really hard, particularly when we're in channels like this and the censorship is so hard to get round. Um, but more and more people are picking up on it and it's just a question of just keep going, letting it seep in. I completely agree about the sort of morphic field, the 100 monkey. It, it's definitely working. I've seen some huge shifts just over the last month, actually, um, which is really encouraging. So talking about you personally, have you had any major belief shifts over the last few years? Any of your core values, core beliefs that have shifted dramatically? No, I don't. I, you know, I, I think those those times in my life were before that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, gosh, many years ago, um, I think one of the one of the big ones, perhaps, it's an interesting one is the, so there was, I always had an intuitive feeling that this world seemed to be, I don't know, couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't probably verbalize it, but it didn't feel like it was the real thing. Even as a child, like I would question certain things. But of course, you know, the, the more you learn and the more you open your eyes, the more uh, vocabulary you get to express these things. And I, perhaps I think what was uh, the biggest shift was that we are most likely, most likely, I can say that, not living in what we would call prime reality. I think we're living already in a, a you know, quote unquote matrix. And and I, I do believe that it's sort of like an electromagnetic grid that is superimposed on the real thing. And that keeps us in this perceptual prison, if you will. And what, what makes me say that the most is... Um, deep inner experiences and meditations and even group meditation experience that we guided where we experienced things that simply do not happen in this reality but yet we all knew they were real and i knew they were real and so uh, perhaps the biggest um the, the biggest and most freeing thing was to release the belief that this is the real thing it would be sad if this is the real thing <laughs> quite frankly but I think we're scratching. I think we're scratching on the surface of of um, sort of, uh, you know, dissolving this grid, if you will. I think it's a consciousness thing. It's a vibration thing. And I think that's why the idea is to keep us in a low vibrational state, keep us in the fear state. So yeah. we, f we feed this. And if we rise above that state and go higher and higher in our consciousness, I think eventually this grid simply won't work any longer. And um, and sometimes it seems like in inner journeys, you peek through and you see the magnificent beauty of what's really there. And I think uh, I think that's, that's still ahead of us to see that on a collective level. I don't know if everybody's going to be a part of it, but, but quite a few people will. 
I so agree with you. And you can see glimpses of it all the time in everyday life. I mean, it reminds me a bit about, is it the 12 agreements or the 10 agreements? Um, but it's it, so like that, you know, I, I had a really surreal experience a couple of weeks ago where I was sitting in our garden with a group of friends and what I was seeing and feeling experiences were completely different to them, completely. And it's just, you can pick up on it, but it's very difficult to explain it. Um, so yeah, I completely believe like that. I do always really wonder what the animals are seeing and feeling um, I, because we know they can came see here. It. Mm. I, you know, I, we have uh, two dogs and three cats here, and so especially the cats more than the dogs. So they see things all the time, and and uh, and and obviously are tuned into a different frequency, different reality, if you will, or expanded. Yeah. Uh, and and like you know, in horses, we've seen it a lot. Uh, they they seem to see different things, experience things differently. Um, yeah. Animal communication is probably my favorite right now. Animals are my favorite people, <laughs> Catherine. Absolutely. I've only got five cats at the moment. There's always room for more. So although some of mine wouldn't like it if I get any more. So what would you say you'd learn? I mean, we've covered it probably ties into what we've just been talking about. But in terms of about yourself, with you since you started the Inspired Channel. How's that impacted you as a person and the way you live your life? Because I, I know how much work that takes. It's, you know, I think uh, I was always sort of purpose driven in terms of what I uh, what maybe my my human based ego pictured and what I felt my purpose was oftentimes weren't, weren't quite the same things. So one of the things is that that fell into complete alignment and I'm, I sort of, I, I sort of look at life. I'm, I'm not here to, you know, have, you know, 12 weeks of vacation every year and, and sit on a yacht. I just don't feel like that's something that I'm here to do right now. Um, so that's become, that's become a very beautiful and, and sim now simple thing. It's th this is what the creator puts in front of me every day. And this is what I choose to do. What I will say is that has really come out, which surprised me more on a personal level is um, I was always aware of sort of a uh, an inner warrior, if you will, mm -hmm. um, that I think, you know, that's sort of the masculine energy very much expressed. It just wasn't probably as big a part of my life as it is now. It's just come out. Um, and I, I cultivate that. And I think cultivated, it's a very, very useful thing. Um, and in sort of this, you know, there's a line in the sand here. And um, I, I, I wasn't aware that my willingness to protect that line in the sand was so strong. Uh, but that, that's probably what came out the most in the last years. And I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm really appreciative of that because the more parts of yourself that you get to know and cultivate, the better I feel. I couldn't agree with you more. It, it's such an exciting journey to be on. And, you know, throughout history, we we started the conversation talking about the people that literally are digging their own graves. And sometimes it's not until you, you find you're really put in a situation, your back's up against the wall, that you really find out what you are capable of. And we're quite lucky. I mean, everyone's saying this is the most traumatic time in history but as a mother I tell you you know sending my children off to fight in the trenches would have been far more traumatic for me than 2020 and I know it's a different type of thing but you know at least we've got so many tools in our toolkit now and so many resources um, but equally it's so confusing for people like, there's so many distractions so what do you think some of the biggest distractions are out there that are pulling people's energy away from where it needs to be? I mean, this, you know, you're not probably not going to like this, but it's, it's, it's this platform that we're on right now and, yeah. and similar platforms that can be a useful tool or they can be a destructive distraction. 100%. And, you know, the, the, the constant consumption of content and other people's voices. And I, you know, I'm, I'm fully aware of the irony here, but mm -hmm. I, I actually, you know, I say this uh, kind of quite frequently I don't want to be anyone's guru and I encourage you not to seek out the guru that's somewhere on a screen that you just buy what they say hook line and sinker. So th that is the biggest distraction 
and and sort of this cult, if you will, this they operate very, very um, in a sneaky way. So basically, they're okay with you waking up as long as they have a gatekeeper at every stage of the awakening that pulls you in and says, hey, hey, here, this is the cam. We're winning. We're the white hats. We're taking care of yeah. it. We're this. And so at every level, you have these these psyops that are pulling you in and they're keeping you occupied for months on end and, and feeding you false hope. And then you, you sort of go through it and then you're, you know, disappointed and then you move on. So I think this, you know, we are so uh, ill-equipped still to deal with such a medium that's so powerful, that is so, um, has such a huge presence in our lives now. So I would really say just I would step away from the screens, step away from the technology, turn off your Wi-Fi every now and then, uh, oh, go, out and, go out in nature a lot, right? Um, bare feet in the grass, touch mm -hmm. a tree, uh, you know, feel the leaves, uh, talk to the animals, be immersed in that space. I love bodies of water, just walking next to them, sitting next to them. Um, and, and, and listen, you know, listen, not just, I see people all the time, they walk through the woods and, and they have their earbuds in and listen to something. I'm like, come on, give yourself at least the chance to be here now. Uh, and again, I, I get the irony. I mean, we, we do have online channels, but I really don't want to give the impression that, you know, we're in it so people can consume content every day. If you can get something of value that inspires you, great. And now see how you can apply it in your life and see how you can improve uh, your situation. So the noise, and it's surprisingly easy to turn it off. You know, silence your phone, uh, close the laptop, even turn off the Wi-Fi for a little bit. And you'll see that, you know, it doesn't it doesn't follow you if you don't want it to. And that makes a huge change. And then um, you got to replace it with something. And I would I would suggest that people start with baby steps. How can they become more self-reliant, self-sufficient, both internally, externally, small things? You know, uh, can you start with growing a few plants, maybe in, maybe maybe just in a planter, maybe in your apartment? Yeah. Can you start a garden? Can you do something that will give you more independence and freedom today? Those are those baby steps are very fulfilling. I agree so much. I mean, I'm I'm just loving going back to, you know, really creating. I mean, I've always cooked from scratch, really, anyway, because that's just something that's always been really important for me and the family. Um, but, you know, getting back out and we've just got a new second house, greenhouse. We've been working with Jim Gale's team as well to turn our plot into a food forest. And it's so exciting because it's not just what you get out of it. Our garden is such a wildlife haven. It's, it's virtually impossible to get any work done when you're watching all the wildlife along with all ours. So in terms of, has there been anything recently that you thought, oh my goodness, I was wrong about that? It's a good question. I, you know, um, there are very few things that I consider uh, consistent hard facts in this world. Um, mm -hmm. There's, there's, because you peek at things, and then you find more information, and then you come to preliminary conclusions. But if you're, if you're really a, a forensic researcher, and to a certain extent, I've done this for many years, you go, okay, this is the next stage. This is the part that I can see. So I don't, you know, I. I um, it's very seldom that I go, this is the way it is. Mm. This is what I've discovered so far. So um, is there anything recently that I could think of where I was really wrong about? I I don't know. I I really can't answer that other than um, the truth is like an onion, you know, when we peel one layer at a time. And the only thing that I could think of that probably uh, is wrong is to stay at that layer and think that's it. Yeah. But I'll I'll tell you this. It's many years ago, I read a book. Uh, it was the first book where I really got sort of the verbalized concept of the law of attraction, if you will, right? And that was very more superficial than anything. And I remember thinking, now I got it. I mean, this was the missing key. Now, now it's, you know, it's like, what else is there to know? Boom. Life immediately showed up uh, in the next few days and gave me so many opportunities to learn. 
So, um, you know, I'll come back to that question if I can think of something where I was really surprised that I saw it completely different than it maybe was, but I can't think of something right now. Yeah, no, it's a fascinating one. I remember, um, you know, being from the UK, we've had it in mainstream media. I have to be careful how I say this, depending on which platform I put it on, um, about the bang bangs that you have in America. And, you know, all we get told about is the mass shootings in the school. That's all we get publicised everywhere. And then I listened to a podcast back in 2019. I can remember exactly where I was, where suddenly that bit of my mind clicked into place. And I said, like, oh, oh, OK, this is why they want everyone armed, everyone not able to protect themselves. And everything started. Once you see that, that everything else made sense in a completely different way. So for me, that's probably the last time I thought that I had a set belief system that I fallen into and i suddenly saw it a completely different way um which was fascinating you know I, I carry a wallet when i leave the house i carry a bang bang when i leave the house it's like this is a it's a it's it's you know i'm of european descent too so i i get the the mindset and the brainwash in that um but you know like you say when you really when you really go again forty thousand foot view you go wait so it makes total sense to give the government uh, monopoly over that, and they're the only ones who can have it. Yet the entity, historically speaking, who has killed the most people were always governments, like by far. Okay. Uh, and you don't want to give yourself a chance in case you need to, to protect yourself. Or, I mean, there's other purposes. There's hunting, really. That's In the United States, that's not why it's constitutionally protected. It's not hunting. It's really really to be able to rise against a tyrannical government that was the whole purpose why they constitutionally protected it and um thank god people are, very, people are very uh most you know we're in the south here we're, we're in tennessee so most southern states i want to say you know the you'd probably it, it would be hard for you to find a household that's not armed it, it's very unusual yet it is it is not at all a problem or you know nobody's running around shooting there are shootings um but that's usually mainly criminals that do that i mean that's just how you know completely criminal, criminal will use a tool any tool they can get their hand on yeah no it was just a really interesting time for me where i just thought that that was another leap forward for me in terms of understanding the brainwashing and the mind control and how um contrived it all was um, I've enjoyed this so much. I'm very conscious of your time. Just wanted to finish off with a couple of things. What would your message be to people that are watching them and are feeling a little bit overwhelmed at the moment? It's it's sort of the guidance that I, I give when I'm asked always is um, start with your own journey first. And that is an inner journey, right? The The rabbit holes will be there. Trust me, they'll be there. And when we are in a balanced state of being, then we can maneuver these difficult topics and find much more clarity in them. When we are not balanced, when we are fearful, when we're stressed out, when we're anxious, um, then, you know, that's just going to add and, and put more on your plate. So I would encourage everybody to start with some inner practices. If you don't have that, breath work is amazing. There's a lot out there. Very simple. If you go to YouTube and look for Wim Hof, he's the he's the king of breath work. Great guy. And just start with very simple practices. Start your day like that. Maybe add a little inner journey, or you can call it meditation or inner journey or prayer. Something that centers you, anchors you, connects you, balances you. And the second big thing that um, you know, we've been touching on that earlier is if you haven't and all considered it before, consider inner healing that, you know, that's the healing of the soul in the psyche. So there's, this, there's one um, process that we love. There's many avenues, but one that we love and know very well. That's why we recommend it. It's the journey.com. Just go and see if this speaks to you. And, um, you know, the, the, the general idea is when we're balanced, when we're whole and we're, when we're healthy, we're by default creating a different world. So it's sort of what we plug into this world is who we are. So by desiring to create the best possible version of yourself, you are literally 
helping with the situation at large. So don't think that that doesn't matter. That is the most important thing. And then, you know, you will feel inspiration to do certain things, say certain things, or express yourself in a certain way. But that should be the first step if you're just sort of at the beginning of that journey is really to find healing. Um, and and you'd be surprised how many people think they don't need it, but we all need it. And I'm, I'm saying this really, like as a general statement, I haven't met a human being yet that has not experienced some sort of trauma in our society. It's just almost impossible. And those who are aware of it and who work on that and with that uh, have very, very balanced and beautiful lives, even through this madness. Such brilliant advice. I couldn't agree with that more. And, you know, it's more it's so important because you're actually breaking that cycle of the generational trauma when you do that work with yourself. So it's, for those of you that are parents, whether it's to two legged or four legged, it doesn't matter. You're You're breaking that cycle. And that's one of the biggest gifts that we can give anyone we love. Thank you so much, John. That's just been such a fantastic conversation. Now, obviously, I would be putting all your links below, but just tell people the best way to connect in and find your work. Well, first off, it was my honor, Catherine. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for your beautiful work uh, and your light that you're shining into the world. We appreciate it. Um, and yeah, if you want to connect with us, you know, probably the best the best springboard is theinspiredchannel.com. And from there, you can go, you know, to our YouTube channel or Rumble or our locals community and all the other places, but the inspired channel.com. And if you want to uh, listen in on some music, it's jeannolan.com. This is J-E-A-N, nolan.com. I actually have a new song coming out in a few days here, April 19th. Time to be fantastic. free. So, yeah. Um, and I would love, love, love to welcome your community as well and, and get to know them. It's just for, uh, this is one of the blessings I think that the last few years have really brought about. The community across the globe has just been absolutely fantastic and the support and the journey and the learning that we're all going on together is fantastic to watch. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much to all the listeners. I hope we can encourage you to come back again. I know you're a very busy man. And to everyone that's... Oh, watching, I'd love to. I'd love to. Uh, it's just so much to talk about, but all your links will be below. Go and look at them, everyone, because there's so much fantastic information out there. And then for the rest of your time, get out in nature with your loved ones. Take care. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. And if you feel inspired, please do share with your friends and family. My goal is to inspire as many people as I can to live their best lives, to stay curious and to raise their consciousness and that of the collective. So to do this, I need to reach as many people as possible and this needs your help. If you feel drawn, would you be willing to share your favourite episode with five different people? This helps us spread the word and also helps me encourage some exciting new guests to take part in this podcast. If you feel drawn to do that, I will be very, very grateful. All the links and discount codes where applicable for all the products that I support are on my two websites, katherineedwards.life and katherineedwardsacademy.com. All of the products are personally tried and tested by me, my family and my clients. And finally, please do press the follow or subscribe button, depending which platform you're listening on. And above all, stay curious and stay free.